Hello and welcome back. Uh, if you're just joining us, this is part two of our actualized uh, online day program. This group began with their pre-work session in August of 2021, um, and they have built out some really cool projects that they are now presenting because today's their last day of class and they're graduating. So this is the second group um, joining us for panels. We've got Jay Wengro again, our CEO. Uh, and we also have Chelsea Roston, who is a former student of mine uh, and a former TA. She is also a software engineer at Litmus. Uh, today's pa panelists are all Litmus engineers. Um, I've heard really great things about this company, so we're really like plugging them today. Um, Chelsea, you want to tell us a little bit about yourself? Sure. Yes. <laughs> um, yeah, I attended Actualized from January to May 2021. <laughs> well, uh, yeah, and so I currently work, um, before that I was in education, I worked with um, kids and adults with intellectual disabilities and autism, and I made the switch during COVID like so many others did to leave education and find a new career. And then I did Actualize and I TA'd and I loved it. And then I got a job, so I had to leave and I was sad. And now I'm back with the panel and I'm happy again. <laughs> Yay. The true actualized life cycle. So it happens to all of us. Uh, excellent. Um, getting started with our second group. First up, we have got Lucas, who's going to present his capstone project and paneling for him today will be Chelsea. Take it away, Lucas. All right, I hope my internet can handle this. All right, hello, I'm Lucas and I am presenting the Dota 2 database. Uh, I, <clears throat> the only game I pretty much play nowadays is Dota 2 and when I saw a bunch of other people um, making things kind of like this, I kind of thought like, uh, I know I saw no, some of them have the, none of them have the feature to follow players, but to walk you through it, here's the home page that shows you. Uh, this is the options of like things you can look on it. Uh, if you go through, um, if you're like a guest, you can. It has the option to look through live games, and when you click it, it'll show you a list of the current games. It does take a bit of it to load because the API has to go through my internet. My internet isn't really going the fastest right now, but it'll take a bit. <clears throat> Since I might take a bit, I also had this prepared. If you want to go and see the list of players, I also have a pulled up pre, like pre pulled it up. <clears throat> but here's a list of all the players. You can sort them by name, uh, sort them by the team they're in, you know, you can sort them by the country. <clears throat> and say you wanted to go find a specific player, like this one, click right here, and you can view their profile. Like, no, no. <laughs> Didn't like when I did it like that, but yeah. Let's see, let's see if this pulled up. Not yet, but anyways, yeah. And this here's this player. Now, when you log in, now you can only just see this, and then here's the button to go back to it. But if you want to say you start following players, you can sign in, and I'll use this demo account that I made. And up here, and I guess that's not working with me right now. But anyways, when you log in, you'll have usually people I expect to use this will already have a Dota account. So I had it to retrieve your information and then you can just pull up your recent games here. So here's a list of all the right here so you can see them. <laughs> and then and then we can start looking for players. Usually takes a bit, like I said. <laughs> Just actually, let's look at another player. Mm -hmm. I'm being real bug. Oh, oh. Well, that's fine. We'll only wait for that to hopefully pop them. And then usually players will play a bunch of games. So, like some of some of these numbers here, which are like their competitive ranking numbers, will change and this will be outdated. Or say they're, you know, they change teams. So we'll go for this player, for example. You can update it and the number should change. 
Uh, you may have to refresh it, but well, I guess they haven't been playing lately. Ah well, but yeah. See, ah yes. And here's a player that pulled up, and here's the follow button. Follow them, and I'll ask you to confirm. Follow them right here. <clears throat> Errors will come. That's uh, that is good because I did put in the back code that <clears throat> sometimes the, the these players will already be taken. So just have to refresh it, do it again. Sometimes these bugs happen. Like I said, it takes a while. So I also have a few other things while we wait for that here. I threw it in for fun. I threw in a contact page. If you ever want to just throw a message for the heck of it. And then here's some of my info, just to put it there. Other features while we wait. I also have it to where, like I said, you have a Dota account, so you can change it. The number to be something else. I would change it now, but I, there's only so many numbers to run through. Well, this is being buggy. It's a shame, but you kind of get what I mean. You can go through this, you can add it. I was, you know, I did showcase that, you know, it adds in or it just adds in without me knowing it right here. But that's pretty much it. That's the database for you. Excellent, thank you. Chelsea will be paneling for Lucas. Yes, I, my first question is, um, so all of the data you're pulling at comes from a third party API, I'm assuming, unless you work something up too. Um, so what like API did you use to get all that information for Dota 2? For the API, I used Open Dota API. It has a resource of all the players that play Dota. Oh no. Whoops, sorry about that. <laughs> okay, thank you. I have to look into that because that's a lot of information <laughs> for all that they pulled real time results. Um, let's see. And then, so what would you want back. to do next? Oh, yes. I, okay. Oh, sorry. <laughs> oh, no, you're good. Um, so, what would your like next step be for that? What would you like to build out next? Or do you think you're like at a good place, stopping point? For my next step, I did want to get it to where, you know, that page I had where you had to like manually update the players. I kind of want to do it to where the moment you enter that page, it'll just automatically refresh every single player for you. Do you have any ideas of how you'd want to do that? Or have you like done any research on it yet? I think I just had an idea on how to implement it as I was uh, waiting to present. So I might start playing around with that after the break, after the holidays. Okay, awesome. Thank you. That was really cool. Thanks. Excellent. Nice job, Lucas. Thank you so much. Uh, next up, we have got Kelly and Jay will be paneling for Kelly today. Okay. Hi, everyone. My name is Kelly. And for my app, I made an anxiety app. I was really inspired to do this because I struggle with anxiety and I feel like there's an amazing opportunity in tech to really advance the mental health world. Um, so my app is called Infinite Loop. As you see up here in the upper left-hand corner, the reason why I called it Infinite Loop is because uh, as all of you know, in coding, you can make loops 
And if you forget to put in a stop condition, the automation will just run forever and break your computer down. And I feel like that's exactly like anxiety, you know, like you get all these thoughts and these feelings and you don't have any idea how to stop it and you'll just shut down. So hopefully this app is a way to circumvent like a lot of anxiety experiences that people have. So I'm just going to start by logging in my user. Her name is Winnie, which is the name of my mom's dog. She's a four pounds little orange Pomeranian. She's the cutest thing. So I just needed to make an account for her, you know? So this is the first page you will be logged into. It's called My Chart. And it's going to list all the anxieties that you've ever logged. And the first thing here is going to be the text box where you enter your anxiety. For me, I wanted to be really deliberate about all of these titles I put. Um, the first one is called Life Theme, and I put that there because I feel like when people have anxiety, it usually falls under a certain life category, like relationships or job or school. So I put that there as the first one. The next title was Intrusive Thought or Feeling. This gives the user the opportunity to explain what's going on like what's the ruminative thought they're having i also put feeling there because anxiety is not always verbal thoughts or images sometimes it's urges and feelings and i wanted to give the user the chance to log that this next title here is called anxiety theme and I thought this was really important because as I've been working on my own anxiety over the years, I've learned that there are a lot of different like sub themes that anxiety falls under. And that actually leads me to the next part of my website, which is right here. If you see, it says anxiety themes, where I provided a list of 11 sub themes of anxiety. So if a user is having a hard time understanding the kind of anxiety they're having, they can read this list. Just to give you an idea, like one of them is all or nothing, catastrophizing, magnifying. I included the definition here, like all or nothing, viewing a situation in only two categories instead of on a continuum. I also gave an example, everyone has to like me, just one example. I gave examples for everything because for me at least, I feel sometimes it's hard to apply definitions to my own life. So hopefully with the user seeing these examples, they can have a better idea on how to apply these things to themselves. So going back to now this text box page, the next title you'll see here is opposite action because the idea is if you're having like an anxiety instance like an anxiety episode you want to recognize it log it and then do something else to take your mind off of the anxiety experience you're having whether that's listening to a podcast reading taking a walk whatever it is so that gives the user the opportunity to add that in here and then lastly is the timer where you can set the time for however long you want to do this opposite action. So uh, just as an example, I'm going to create an anxiety instance for Winnie. Uh, let's say that this has to do, her theme is world. And her, I know this is like a big fear that she's having right now. Um, so I'm just going to say, I'm afraid that I will get angry, angry again, and bite someone. This has been like a thing lately. Uh, anxiety theme, let's say that she's catastrophizing. And opposite action, like let's, let's make Winnie lay down because she needs to chill. She's a Pomeranian. She's going to do this for 20 minutes. So when I hit submit, you'll see it creates a new card right here. It says world, exactly what I said. I'm afraid I'll get angry again and bite someone. 
so on and so forth. If you scroll down, it has all these other instances that Winnie has logged of her anxiety and it logs from newest to oldest. So you can always have the freshest anxiety up here. Now, if you want to edit your anxiety, if you're like, actually, like I wasn't catastrophizing, I was having tunnel vision. You just hit edit and you type in tunnel vision and update. And it brings you back to the my chart page where it has the new information, tunnel vision. Now, if you're just feeling like I, I don't relate to this anymore, I want to delete it, then you just simply hit delete, it brings you back and it's gone. See another fear. I'm afraid Frank won't put enough Parmesan on my meatballs. I know that that's another fear that Winnie has. Um, okay, so, and then when you're done logging everything, you just hit log out, which routes you back to the login page. This is definitely a passion project for me and I wanna keep working on it. Some things I see in the future that I would like to do is definitely make it a little flashier with buttons, a chart, drop downs. Um, I also want to make this a phone app as well. I think that would be amazing. And I also wanted to have examples for opposite actions. If people can't think of what could I do instead, I want to have like an endless list of things people could do. Um, and lastly, I liked the idea of having an anxiety trends tab that can sift through the chart that you're logging, note how many times you're logging a given anxiety theme and rating it on percentage. Like, okay, this week you had 15 entries of catastrophizing and you had 15 entries of all your anxieties have to do with relationships, this and that. Um, so yeah, that's really my hope for this app to really be an aid to users with anxiety. I know that anxiety can be such an overwhelming thing and it just can really sometimes hijack your life experience. So I hope that this app could just bring a little bit of relief and help to people in defining their experience and creating their own stop condition for anxieties, even if it's temporarily for like a minute or whatever. So uh, I just wanted to thank everyone um, for my experience at this boot camp. I want to uh, reiterate what Ian said. Amanda is definitely the best teacher I've ever had. And I'm so grateful to this school. I wouldn't have been able to make it in any other boot camp. And I, I just really appreciate the education model here. So thank you. Kelly, this is uh, an incredible app. Uh, it's, it's very obvious that you put a tremendous amount of thought into this and the, yes. in terms of the, the concepts and the design and the way the user would interact with it and the different entries that they would put in. So it's, it's really impressive how much thought you put into this. What would you say was your favorite aspect about building this? <laughs> I would say, you know, it's so funny because I came into this boot camp. Amanda knows this. And I was like, I want to be a front end engineer. I'm very visual. I'm very creative. And now I'm like, I want to be a back end engineer. <laughs> I'm like, that is, I do not like, oh man, that is like very hard. The, the front end. Oof. So I would say the back end, you know, I feel pretty confident with the back end, the routes, cre creating the skeleton of an app. It's, it's a lot of fun. I genuinely enjoy it. And with that said, you can gather that the front end was the most difficult and unenjoyable. So, yeah. Cool. Um, what would you say is like the biggest takeaway having worked on this project and building it? Uh, I really could have used this throughout the whole boot camp. You know, I was very <laughs> anxious this whole boot camp, like a lot of nervous breakdowns. Um, mm -hmm. No, okay. So my biggest takeaway uh, in creating this, man, um, I definitely would like to do some more practice with JavaScript and front end 
and uh, also that knowing the bare bones of how a website works really makes creating any kind of complex website possible. Mm -hmm. So that's really cool. Yeah, that's a really great insight. Um, Kelly, this is really amazing. Uh, really impressed. Uh, congratulations. Thanks. Thank you so much, Kelly. Um, I think your front end looks great. So, you know, that's just my opinion. Mm -hmm. But uh, next, yes, it does. Yeah. <laughs> next up, we've got Mitchell and Chelsea will be uh, paneling for Mitchell today. All right, um, speaking of anxiety, here we go. Um, I'm Mitchell Summers and uh, pretty early on in the cohort, I wanted an app. I knew my capstone was gonna be something about disc golf. Um, I settled on an online disc golf store for disc golf discs and accessories. And much later in the cohort, I decided not to do that and make an app more user oriented. Um, as opposed to product oriented. Um, most simply, uh, my app is uh, to make a quote unquote disc golf appointments, which uh, are called cards. And uh, we'll get into that a little later. Um, for some context, I've played disc golf for about 10 years and it's a lot less formal than uh, traditional disc golf. Uh, largely, you're not paying um, to play or setting tee times or anything like that. Um, you kind of just show up to the course or park and just play. Um, sometimes uh, my friends or family don't want to join me or don't want to feed my addiction. Um, so I'm kind of left uh, to figure it out on, on my own. Um, there's some merit to playing disc golf by yourself, but uh, it's a lot more fun with other people. So uh, yeah, I made this app. Um, a big goal of mine was to make it simple. Um, as you can see, there's only a few buttons that you can click on um, You can go to the courses. Um, quick to point out, um, I could, there's not that many uh, APIs for disc golf, surprisingly. Um, <laughs> so I had to hard code all these co uh, courses in um, and they're only in Colorado, so. Um, so you can see a list of courses, uh, you can click on them. You've got the address, the rating, and um, yeah. But the main bread and butter is uh, to uh, find people to play with. So uh, we're making an, an account real fast. And this sends us to the login page. Uh, and we get sent back home, but we've got a few more options to choose from. Um, we've got, we already had the courses, but uh, now we've got a new card and a user home. The user home, um, it's a new account, so there's not a lot going on with it. But um, say you're looking for somebody to play with, you can go to the courses, um, you can find a course that you're thinking about playing at and click on it and they'll have a list of cards. Um, you've got the date and the other people playing on it. If you wanna join it, you just click it and hit the join button. And now your user home, you've got a card that you've uh, joined. Uh, let's say you can't make it, you can click the card, you can leave, not in it anymore. Um, if you want to make a new card, you go to the new card, um, just have practice, month, day, time. Um, privacy, um, this is a feature that ended up not getting used as there's um, some things I didn't get to implement, but it's part of it. Um, and then you pick a course. So now you've got a card that you have um, and click it. And as you can see, there's no players joined yet, but um, we could get on 
another uh, user that can look for that. Um, so this user, um, they've got a little more stuff going on. Uh, as you build up, you make more appoint appointments, um, which are called cards. And you can see everything that you're in, ones that you have, and you can see, uh, let's see, that new card that uh, our new buddy made. I think it was this one. But yeah, um, that's pretty much it. Um, yeah. Awesome. <laughs> I have like a few friends who play disc golf every week and they would probably love something like this. <laughs> Sadly, they're in Maryland, they are not in Colorado. So if you had some Maryland courses, I'm sure you would have some users. <laughs> um, so looking back on like in your progress of building this, is there anything you would have implemented differently or changed if you had a chance to start over? Um, originally uh, for the model for the card, I had date time, but uh, something about it is deprecated. I think you just use date now. Um, so I ended up just uh, resorting to strings for uh, date month uh, and time. I kind of wish I went back and changed that, but. Yeah, that the date time date stuff is tricky. Yes, hard to agree. <laughs> <laughs> I have tussled with it in my day. Um, so then what um, feature did you enjoy building the most out of this? Um, I think I liked the, uh, the user home. Uh, I think that's kind of where most of the attention is for, um, and, and then the course view. Um, mm -hmm. I think some of the limiting factors are due to the bootstrap theme. I think, uh, having a customized, uh, theme, uh, would work out a lot better just to organize things. Yeah. The bootstrap themes can be limiting. Yeah. <laughs> um, are you considering, I see like there's options to like leave like a, you know, a card. So have you considered like any sort of like notification system? So, you know, I'm a user, I made this card, I'm expecting my friends to show up and then they all leave. And then I'm the only one who shows up <laughs> <laughs> Right. You know, looking like a fool at the disc golf course. <laughs> um, yeah, that would be definitely something. Uh, there's a whole list of things I'd like to implement, like uh, like a friend system, uh, like in a mm -hmm. messenger, um, and the notifications would definitely be part of that. Yes, and that stuff is interesting to try to implement because I that was my other that was a stretch goal for myself on my own capstone. <laughs> I was doing lots of googling and. Yeah, I wanted to that. do it, but I didn't get get around to it. Yes. Oh, yeah, I understand that. But yeah, this is really great. Thank you. Congrats. Thanks. Thank you, Mitchell. Next up, we have Gail and Jay will be paneling for Gail today. Um, okay. Hi, everybody. My name is Gail. I am currently a math teacher. So I've been a math teacher for the last 12 years. I started out teaching high school and I currently teach at a junior college, a local junior college, but I've kind of been stagnating. And one of my friends said, why don't you try coding? So I joined Actualize this summer and it's been a great decision. It's been a, a huge challenge for me. Uh, but I created this app and I'm hoping to take it even further in the future. A couple of years ago, my husband went to a beer and cook Girl Scout cookie pairing at a local brew pub. And I thought, what a cool idea for a cookbook to pair beer with food. 
So when I was trying to think of an app, I thought I really want to make a cookbook that pairs great beer with all the food that you like to eat. So I created Brews and Bites. And on the homepage, it has an option where you can sign up as a new user, but in the, in the interest of time, um, I'll log in a current user. I've used Meg, who's one of our awesome TAs, and I'll log in as Meg. So once you log in or sign up, it will take you to this welcome page and it has a recipe index and a beer index. So you can click, if you're interested in finding a recipe to make, you can click on the recipes index. Right now, I've hard coded a few recipes in just to showcase. In the future, I would like to create sections. So starters for appetizers, suppers for main dishes, and then a sweets um, section for desserts. So I'd like this to be in the future a little bit more organized. There is also a spot for a user to create a recipe. So a user, once you're logged in, you can create your own recipe with a title, description, ingredients, and you can upload an image too. So I'll click on, oh, this is, <laughs> this is too big. I've got to make this smaller. Oh. oh my gosh, my template just. <sighs> okay. So back to the recipes index. Sometimes, so for all of you, um, this is my first time coding. It's also my first time using a Mac. So sometimes I'll hit something on the Mac um, mouse and it will make things bigger or smaller. Anyway, <laughs> I'm gonna try this again. So if you click on a recipe, it pulls up a description, ingredients, instructions. It also gives you an idea for a beer pairing. So this is an actual recipe from my repertoire. What I would like to do in the future is to get this more as a list. For example, the ingredients, I would like them as a bullet point more. But with this bootstrap template, there were some challenges with uh, the way it's laid out and what it would allow me to do in terms of updating. So definitely something I want to play around with in the future. A user can recommend a beer or they can go back to all recipes. I have paired this with a Wild Onion Pub, which is a brewery close to us with an Imperial Stout. So you can recommend a different beer if you're a user. You can also browse the beers. So you could go to the beer section. Again, I would rather have this organized by style of beer. So in the future, it'll be It'll have more, uh, more data, but if you're interested in a beer, you can click on it. One of the things that I'd like to do in the future is to add a map feature. So if you click on a beer, it will give you an option to go to a map that has a pin with the brewery. So if you're interested in visiting, this brewery is actually in Germany, so that would be a cool place to visit. So users have the option of, um, adding their own recipes, adding their own beers. I would like to do more with the pairing aspect of the app. You can go uh, back to the homepage. Up at the top, I also have navigation if you wanna to get to recipes or if you wanna to get to the beer section and the user can uh, also log out. So that is, that's my app. Um, there are a lot of features that I would like to add to this in the future and a lot more that I would like to do with it. I also, like Kelly, want to thank everyone uh, in my cohort, especially Amanda, Jonathan, um, and Meg for being great instructors and TAs. And everyone in my cohort has been fantastic. I've enjoyed working with everyone. 
Um, and I'm going to miss all you guys. So everybody keep in touch. And I'm open to questions. Thank you. Yeah, this is such a great idea, Gail. And it's really well implemented. And um, it looks great. I'm curious to know. So it sounds like you mentioned that you're using some kind of theme. Um, was besides the bullet point uh, feature was working with the theme easy or difficult and every theme is different so curious to know how right. it was for you um i used the restaurantly theme and it was definitely challenging on the front end it was challenging to implement a lot of the things that i wanted to do mm -hmm. one of the hardest things was um when i linked to the pictures for the app um especially the recipe pictures I would love for this to be a mobile app in the future, but when you shrink, when you shrink the size of the page, the picture goes all janky and shrinks with it. So uh, there are some issues with uh, the CSS was a little bit difficult to work with. Yeah, so. modifying the CSS of a theme is uh, sometimes a fool's errand. It's sometimes right. It's impossible. It's, that was the most. I think that was the most challenging part was to get. Um, all of the pages to look correct. Yeah. What was um, your favorite part about working on this app? So my favorite part was actually working on an app from start to finish. I thought mm -hmm. it really helped solidify a lot of the information that I've learned throughout the boot camp. Um, Obviously, I enjoy backend more, but I think that's just because I'm more familiar with it. I'm really mm -hmm. enjoying playing around with the front end and seeing how I can get things to work, changing colors, adding pictures. So definitely it's given me a kind of a direction to go for the future. Yeah. Have you shown this to other people yet so you get the reaction? <laughs> I've showed it to a couple of friends and to my husband too. So. Um, they were impressed with it. I think there's, there's a lot of work that it still, still needs, but, um, I'm really happy with how it's turned out so far. Yeah, it looks awesome. And, uh, it's a great idea and it's really executed very well. So congrats. Really nice job, Gail. Thank you. Excellent. Thank you so much, Gail. Uh, this turned out really beautifully and, um, theme woes happen to everybody. So like, no pressure. Like Jay said, updating the CSS is not fun. It's quite an undertaking. Um, next up, we've got Devorah, and Chelsea will be paneling for Devorah today. All right. Uh, hello, and uh, welcome to my app. Um, my name is Devorah, and I am uh, here to present, I guess, my... <laughs> my project. Um, I think the story of my actualized journey has been a series of whether you would call it fate or divine intervention. Um, Jay is actually my professor in college. And uh, because I go to a very small college, I'm the only girl who is taking a uh, computer science uh, bachelor's degree. So I ended up being given the opportunity to take actualized for college credit um, instead of having a one-on-one -on -one with uh, my teachers. And uh, it is possibly, I, I'm gonna rank it among the best things that have ever happened to me. Um, so moving on to my app, I am a writer uh, by a hobby, I suppose you could say. Um, and I think the thing that writers struggle with the most is finding ideas for things to write, whether it's the whole idea for the entire plot of the story, or even just have gathering ideas for maybe changing up a little bit of what the main plot is or motivations for characters and things like that. So my app is here to kind of take all of the things that you'd find on apps like Instagram or Twitter or um, Tumblr or things like that and condense them into a single database that contains all of these uh, ideas. So um, this is the homepage in my... Uh, and then in my about page, there's a little bit of information on what this website is and uh, what it can do. 
Um, moving on to my list of prompts, um, I'm using the same template as Gail, and I can definitely attest to the fact that this bootstrap is incredibly difficult. Um, I think that I can agree with the fact that backend is definitely easier. It takes a lot more finesse and care, whereas frontend feels a little bit more um, exploratory and dangerous in that you're, you tend to just take out chunks of code and then just see what happens and hope that you can uh, figure it out. So this prompts, the list of prompts, the prompt index page is the most difficult thing that I had to deal with simply because the CSS refused to work. This is something I completely had to uh, change up that you can see in my backend code. There are sections that have been um, commented out simply because I needed the space, not the actual content. Um, so here the prompts are listed currently according to title in alphabetical order. And there is two, there are two buttons here where you can edit or favorite prompts. Um, and it, uh, another feature is that you can search for a prompt and the prompt will come up at the top. So um, there is the sign up page where a user who uh, very confused, very um, tired out writer who is suffering from writer's block for months can come here, sign up for their uh, account and uh, start looking for ideas. So to log in, I'm just going to use my own login because I definitely need this website uh, very badly. And um, I'm gonna go and, you know, I don't like the title of this, so I'm gonna, I'm gonna edit it for myself. Um, so I can either edit the title, edit the content, and when I click update, and I scroll down, my prompt has been updated. Another cool thing that I can do is favorite this prompt. So if I click favorite, I'm instantly teleported to my favorites page where I have a bunch of prompts that I have favorited because like I said, I very much need this website. And right here is the prompt that I just favorited. So let's say that I got through all of these ideas. I've written, you know, 20,000 pages of writing. I'm really going strong. I don't need this anymore. I am going to delete and it is gone. Um, and of course, the last and most important thing, being able to exit um, and log out back into the home page. Um, so yes, uh, I suppose one thing that I really want to be able to do to continue this, since this is a very basic, um, beginning of an app, I wanted to add uh, tags or genres, um, much like Philip, in order to uh, kind of uh, make it easier for a writer who's looking for a specific genre or a specific type of idea to be able to find them more easily um, with the search. Uh, unfortunately, I didn't have enough time to do that because I struggled a great deal with uh, my associations, um, simply because I was using a few join tables and it was extremely difficult uh, I'm not very much a methods person. I'm more of a, I, I, I guess I, I have a more of a graphic arts uh, talent as opposed to a technical talent. So it was very difficult to do that, but this is it. Um, <laughs> I love it. I'm a writer. So <laughs> I'm, I'm, um, during my cohort, um, when there's like that one, um, where you could build a gem, like a Ruby gem for like your like, one of the homeworks, like the deep dives. And so I did a gem called Bomb that was supposed to help relieve writer's block. And so it would like, it would randomize like character, um, characters, settings, and like, I forgot something else. And yeah, so, <laughs> so I, I know that feel of needing something, anything. Um, but yeah, I love this. Um, so what feature was easier to implement than you expected? Oh, I have the perfect answer for that. Um, so after a few days of struggling to figure out, especially the favorites page and the favorites button, I decided to try to do the search bar on my own. Um, and surprisingly, it didn't take me longer than a couple hours to read through the text and it, um, implement uh, view two filters, which I used to 
make the search bar, add a little bit of CSS, make it fit in with the rest of the, the theme. And yeah, that was, I was, I was really proud of myself for that. <laughs> yes, that the, I love that. Yes, the search is very important in times like these. And I think I use those YouTube filters on my own capstone. <laughs> so, um, so you mentioned you wanted to um, add, I like genres and of course that's needed because like a someone who's writing like chick lit is not gonna want, likely want fantasy prompts. Well, they might, but that's, let me not get on that spiral. So <laughs> how, like what steps would you take, do you think to, start working on adding these like genres or tags um, to your app? Um, I feel like I would, first of all, have uh, um, have them displayed in the card with the uh, with the title and the content. So um, they would be displayed either at the bottom or at the top or something like that, and then add them as well to the search. So to have the user be able to search for uh, the title or uh, the tag or genre. And um, if possible, I would have a list of genres um, that could be clickable and then have the index of those prompts. There really is a lot uh, that can be done with this. Um, so yeah, that, that would just be the beginning. Awesome, great. Yes, let me know if and or when you deploy this. Um, I, I need definitely this. Definitely will, if, if you let I... me jam. <laughs> Yeah, it's, my Google Keep is a disaster right now of just like random thoughts. So yes, thank you. That's amazing. Thank you. Excellent. Congratulations. Thank you, Devorah. That was really wonderful uh, and totally great that the two of you ended up being partnered together for that. Um, next up, we've got Angelo and Jay will be paneling for Angelo today. Cool. Cool. So I'm Angelo, super excited to show you guys what I've been working on, um, both the struggles and the successes. Um, while the former outweighs the latter, this is definitely the best experience I've had um, educationally and not. Um, so I want to thank all my classmates, instructor, TAs and job hackers who have helped me along the way. Um, I believe I can do anything by myself, but not to the level that you guys have helped me attain. So thank you for that. Um, so for the vision of Cielo, um, as we shift to working from home, we miss out on the collaboration, community, and connectivity that working in an office with all your friends slash coworkers provides. However, commuting to the office is annoying, and this shift to a more autonomous and free workflow is a giant step in the right direction for our workforce. But why can't we have both? Work from home when you want and not when you don't. Um, choose your office space, book a room or chair, and get to work. Leave the resource gathering to us or me. Um, the feature breakdown. As a goal, uh, we provide resources, visibility, and connections for established institutions and those who visit them. Um, get started. We'll lead you to my unofficial about page, a further explanation of what Cielo is and will be. Um, aside from being my mother's name and the universal limit to your goal, Cielo stands for collaboration in every location. Um, find connections and helpful resources all provided by the office spaces in your area. Log in, book, work, it's that easy. Um, for now, Cielo allows you only to see the index of offices located within the platform. Um, showing the index as a whole allows you to see this, that the spaces can be uploaded, viewed, and booked. Furthermore, the goal is to provide a platform for allocating resources to work from homers looking to take the work out of working. Um, what can you do? And what does this mean for you? You get the freedom to decide how to best set yourself up for success. Um, you get the freedom to best set yourself up for success. Using the resources established office space, spaces provide, you are now able to personalize your workspace to fit your goals. What does this mean for spaces? As employees begin to work from home, established spaces are left dormant. Supplying space for individuals wanting to collaborate on their own terms provides the best of both worlds for all involved. For visibility and reference, quick links have been added at the bottom. Um, I'll just click on these quickly just to show you guys. Um, this is the index of all spaces. Going back home, um, you're able to sign up and then log in. I'll show you guys the spaces. So this is the index of spaces. 
anybody will be able to view the spaces, um, whether they're logged in or not. Interacting with them requires you to be logged in. Um, I can show you some more details. Once you click in to Dunder Mifflin, you'll see that um, it's a fictional but real to me paper and office supply company. Um, as of now, it's just a description, but I hope to add some more attributes and details later. Back to all spaces, all of them are much the same. Um, this is a little, a little space that I added when adding a space, and I'll show you how to do that soon. Um, I'll go to sign up. Sign up requires a first name, last name, image URL, birthday, in case I want to add some goodies later on, um, email, password, and password confirmation. I'll show you guys how it works just with a simple put my birthday in there. Password is passed. Don't tell anybody. Okay, I guess that email has already been taken. Let's throw some more A's in there. And that'll throw to the login page. I'll log in with my actual ones so you guys can see. So throw you back home. Now you can see that you're able to add a space, view your profile, and log out. So we'll go to add a space. We'll throw an address in there, just address one, description, address is what it is, address, JPEG, and site. Submit. It'll throw you back to the spaces index. At the bottom, you can see much like this A, it populates address one. If you throw in real data, it'll populate much like Apple Park or Stripe headquarters or uh, Dunder Mifflin or Liberty Street. Um, going to your profile, a little greeting and then your profile photo. That's not me, but I don't judge. Whatever photo you wanna add, it's up to you. Under it, it'll show all your bookings. This account doesn't have any bookings, but when you do go into a space, um, a booking, all it requires is a user ID and a space ID, and then it populates below. Um, yeah, the logout function, back to the homepage, and that's about it. Angela, this is great. Uh, I love the idea and the concept. Um, and I definitely agree that, you know, post COVID, this can be something that's extremely useful. What was your favorite part about building this? Um, I think seeing it come into fruition, it like all started to work at, in like the last week and I was able to kind of see the vision. Um, maybe not the vision that I wanted to see in the beginning, but um, I'm proud of it just to see it all kind of come together. Yeah, for sure. And it looks great. I mean, on that note, it like it's a great looking app. Would you say though that you right now tend uh, to prefer the back end or the front end? Um, well, I would say back end because I'm more comfortable with it, but I, I want to put more practice into the front end. Um, getting more comfortable with mistakes is something that I learned that I need to do in general. So mm -hmm. I need to jump into that front end and, and make some mistakes. Got it. What, uh, tell me more about like what you might add next to this project. Um, I'd like to add more like attributes for personalization for the users, um, a better way to set up your profile to personalize how you want to work um, and then just route that to the spaces so they can provide that to you. Um, aside from that, on the spaces, I'd like to integrate some APIs, some real estate APIs um, and a map just to get some different views of the offices that you want to go to, maybe some favorites, um, just different levels of personalization for the user and for the space. Yeah, those all sound great. Uh, this homepage looks like it's like for real, like this yeah. is out there. And uh, so when you do launch it and make your uh, super successful startup company, uh, just definitely let me know. Mm -hmm. Congrats, Angela. Really, really great job. Thank you so much, Angelo. Uh, last but not definitely not least, bringing us home, we've got Mike. And Chelsea will be paneling for Mike today. Hey, so my name is Mike. Let me move this little thing out of the way. Um, and I decided to do my capstone on a game I've been playing recently called Path of Exile. Um, so a big difficulty about this game is for new players, it's very hard to build your own character because of so many options you have between everything. And every little word in a description of a weapon matters in terms of what it does to your character and all of, its, all of your character's abilities, things like that. 
And so I wanted to create a website where you could import people's builds from the game because they have their own API service. Um, and as well, afterwards, I wanted to make a, a market page because you can also import storages. I, however, did not do the importing part because it would have gotten rid of all of my models except for users, and I would have only had a user in the back end. So I hard coded in things. So practice for whenever I do the, want to implement the actual project and upload it onto a server and host it. But I still really enjoyed doing this. Um, some problems I ran into early on is that there are so many models for everything. If I had done it true to the game, I would have had to have a model for every type of item, a model for the skill tree, every every model for every single type of ascendancy, which is like a character. So this is like a duelist is the character or a ranger or a scion. But then they also have three different options to choose from and where they get another skill tree. So gladiator was one of the duelist ones. Um, Conquer was another, I'm pretty sure. I've never played a duelist. Um, but... So there was, there was a lot of things I had to cut out for the project to make do with time, but I, I still really enjoyed it and I enjoyed the front and back end. Um, so I guess I'll start. I first need to log out because I was not, did not do that. So the first thing is you can, you can make a sign up. Um, I have the name in there. I don't know why though. I'm just gonna put ASDF common. Uh, I always name the password exactly my username, as it is always safe to do that. Um, so email, I'm going to use one that I already had. With beep as the password, a reference to another game I play called Kenshi. So it brings you to the builds. One thing that I didn't really edit, although I should have, is that it only loads them as I scroll down. Um, that was part of the template and I know how to change it. I just didn't compensate for full screen mode whenever I did it. I only did it for partially open. Uh, so not full screen, excuse me. Sorry, I'm COVID tested as of yesterday and I'm negative, but still got a cold. Um, so you click on a build and I only have the items for the characters, um, but you can switch between all the items. Normally, if I had used the API, it would link it to their Steam, their Path of Exile account through their API. And then you could also, they would provide a, a paste bin for all of the things. So they could copy all the information over to a, um, a client side software to help them with all the skill tree and all the customizations and damage calculations. Um, so you can click on one, you can save a build and then go to favorites and your build will be there. And it'll bring you back to the show page for simplicity's sake. And that's pretty much the whole thing. Um, there was a lot of potential behind what I wanted to do, but I am limited to my knowledge of how the game's backend works because it's a completely server-side game. Okay, that was actually kind of cool. I like that. <laughs> I love like seeing like, like these kind of apps built on games because I am a person who will go find the like wiki for a game before I play and read everything up because I don't like surprises, so. <laughs> I like that. <laughs> so you mentioned that you weren't able to use the API because you would have to basically scrap your own backend that you had created. So how would you go about like redoing this? Would you you'd probably just start from scratch? Would you still use Rails? Would you even use a Rails backend? Like, well, how would you try this again? Um. So the backend doesn't matter as much as the front end. I would end up scrapping a lot of my my requests on the front end to my back end. The only thing I would keep on my back end would be my users. Mm -hmm. I would add a couple of columns for their Steam IDs and it'd be an optional one. It wouldn't be a required part of their model because some people don't like linking their Steam 
to yeah. web, external websites. I don't personally at all. Um, but I would be making requests to their API. So like, you know, I just, I wouldn't be making them to local host. It'd be all of the data would be from them and I wouldn't have a database except for users, which is why I didn't do it for the capstone project. Cause it would completely get rid of half of the requirements. Pretty much. <laughs> yes. <laughs> understand that. Um, so what was your, I get, mm. Actually, no, I, I was like, I was, was going to ask you what was your least favorite part, but I'm sure that finding out that you'd have to scrap your whole back end was probably your least favorite part. <laughs> so, so um, outside of like the API and using that API, is there any other features you would add on after you would get that sorted out? Um, yes, it would be the feature that I mentioned earlier. I didn't really go into detail. But another thing that their API provides as well as character data, which is optional, you don't have to provide character data, but mm -hmm. as well as their character data would be their storage data. So you have your own storage and you can buy for like less than a dollar, make a storage, a uh, one public, like optional, you can turn it into a public one, which means you put something in there, you can set a note on it, like a price, and then websites will... Um, like import all this public storage data and organize it by item. So it's a market, an online market. They didn't, they don't have an end game market. It's all just through an API and websites. Okay. That's cool. So you would build like, I guess, kind of like a market on this app for people to. Yeah. To, to see requests and then it would have most likely it's how other places do it. I would just do it as a matter of you know, if you want to, you can use this website, but the main thing is the builds would be, okay. um, they would just have like a little copy message. So it's literally just, a the only thing it would replace between each message is like the thing you're buying, the price, and then the name of the person, but everything else would be exactly the same. Okay, cool. It's really neat. Thank you. Thank you. And congrats. Yes. Thank you. All right, congratulations to Mike and to everyone. This brings us to the end of our presentations for today. Um, just to sort of reiterate what so many of you have already said, I wanna thank um, Jay and Lisa and Sarah, uh, Jonathan and Meg, all of you have been just so helpful in this entire process. Um, and I'm just really grateful that we get to work with y'all and that we get to help you along this journey. Um, thank you, Chelsea, and to uh, Salik for coming in and paneling with us today. Uh, thanks again to Litmus <laughs> for loaning us all your engineers. Uh, appreciate you. Um, but yeah, excellent. Jay, are there any final words you'd like to share? Just want to say that everyone did a fantastic job with their apps and presentations. And uh, it was really a pleasure to watch. Uh, congrats to all of you and really excited to see where you go from here. Thank you so much.